about this? Okay, nope, he doesn't care about that, just giving another face full of seeds. Okay, another face full of seeds. Job listings. Oh, suddenly he doesn't care about this. Nope. And with that as well. What about Mia? Nope. What about Godot? Gumshoe? Maggie. This guy is not talking at all now. He's just in his own little world throwing stuff at people. It must cost a lot of energy to be so angry all the time. Oh my goodness. Alright, back to Trebien. Let's talk to him about the old dude. Nope, nope. Okay, hang on. The guy isn't in the, the list. What about the book, though? Mademoiselle! Yes? Are you looking for that job? What? Uh, no, I was just... <laughs> you walk back to that again, you're picking your timing well, Chassis. Hey, let me see. Your style is un... Uh, is un pure different, but you have a good face. Different. Felicitations, you have passed. I will hire you. Ben, come with me. I will teach you everything I know. Uh, Nick? Help! Did... Did Maya just get abducted? Again? I don't know whether to laugh or feel bad for Maya. Maybe I should do both. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, the guy just took Maya. Anyway, we can now probably have a good ferret around with the Magatama fall in here, maybe. All the fashion magazines. Oh, all these clothes are absolutely atrocious. Some of them have been circled in red. I really hope Mr. Armstrong is not thinking of buying those. A bunch of little trinkets on a shelf by the door. I bet Mr. Armstrong collected them all per uh, personally. Mr. Armstrong even get in there? Oh. And if he got in, could he get out again? I guess we're inspecting the place now just on our own. Mr. Armstrong must be a pretty big neat freak. He already has this table ready to go. Now if only the food in this place was edible. You haven't tried it yet, Nick. Don't judge. Looks pretty cold out there in the streets, peaceful though. It's nice that people can take it easy in the holiday rush. What murder are we looking at this time? Uh, a murder that's already been tried, uh, funnily enough. So, there's an article in a magazine from the previous month. This is now a new year, and in the previous December, apparently Phoenix Wright defended an old client of ours, Maggie Bird, for a second time. She was found guilty. Uh, she was tried for murder, for poisoning a guy. She works at this restaurant, or worked, and at this very table, apparently she was accused of poisoning a customer's coffee. He was sitting on his own, no one else was with him, but she says there was a, a second person at the table. No one else is saying there was. Everybody says no, just the guy on their own, and apparently something happened that gives her motive for murder. And they found the poison on her. The thing is, Phoenix didn't actually try this case. He wasn't the defense attorney. Phoenix didn't have a case that month. In fact, this is an imposter, apparently, that posed as him, threw the case, got her, you know, just sent down the river, and now we're trying to reopen the case with an appeal and bring new evidence to light. So we're doing a proper job of this. But this is the restaurant where she worked. So, yeah, that's the case as it stands currently. 
and we'll see how it goes. We've literally just got started though. We've met an old dude who was in here who also testified. He was a witness and said no one else was here. The owner said no one else was in here apart from the old man, but he was in the kitchen a lot, so he didn't actually see, and she was the only waitress. So, yeah. And Gumshoe was the one who brought this to us. He was furious. He was like, you lost this case? What? Like, you know, you would actually care that we lost a case as a defense attorney and he's a cop. Usually they don't go well together, but since Maggie Bird used to be a cop, when we first met her in the first case we had with her, yeah, he's probably a little angry. He used to look out for her. So this must be the table where the poisoning occurred. The stains tell the story well. The whole area is still cordoned off with police tape. I guess it must still be under investigation. It shouldn't be now that the case is done. But, um... We've lost the Magatama. And the chef here had some psyche locks on him. this guy now without what's her face here maybe no he doesn't care about any of this stuff let's try people actually so this is the old guy that was at the restaurant on the day he's a witness but he doesn't want to talk to us anymore he's just throwing what look like soybeans at pigeons all day. Hmm. Let me go back to the detention center. Ah, here we go. Looks like they have Maggie in questioning. I guess I've asked her pretty much everything. I'll come back if there's anything else I need to ask her later. So, can we now speak to Gumshoe? Yeah, here we go, here we go. He's the murderer. Well, it looks like the murderer was the other person sitting at the table, who no one else sees. I've got a theory that he was hiding under the table. Oh yeah. Because, you know, naturally, of course. Or he came in through the window and left again. Well, pal, have you found the evidence yet? The one that's going to find her innocent? Uh, no, not yet. We've only just started the investigation. You didn't find any. Well, whatever you need, uh, you need to know, I'll give you the dirt on it. I'm pulling off all of my other cases. Oh, putting off all my other cases for now, pal. Gumshoe's really fired up about this. Oh, yeah, one more thing. The retrial's been approved. Court's sitting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. <laughs> Godot's gonna be the prosecutor. Well, of course he is. Does anybody remember a guy called Edgeworth? When we used to hate that guy so much because he was always the guy we fought. Those were good days. Can we have Edgeworth back, please? Now listen up, pal. If Maggie's found guilty again, yes, um, I'll make sure you get locked up for good. Got it? I'm not sure you can actually do that, but okay. Sure, give it your best shot. So, the guilty party was Maggie Bird, huh? Yeah. Back when she was on the police force, you were her mentor when she was a rookie. Now, what are you talking about? I'm right here. You were her mentor as a rookie, right? Yeah, I kept a close eye on her. I mean, not too close, you know. What's with the funny look, pal? I was just a... it was like... Any, anything like, you know, sure. Look, sure, I was her boss when she was doing her training. But that was it. Nothing happened. Oh, I don't doubt that. <laughs> Gumshoe sure is sweating up a storm over nothing. So that's it. A big old Gumshoe has a little old crush on Maggie. Oh. I... I don't like her or anything. I... I was... Ah! Note to self, gossip with Maya about this later. Oh, yeah, we got a dish. Look, pal, don't tell anyone, okay? Gotta keep it a secret, got it? Sure. Would you mind not guessing what I'm thinking all the time? 
Hey, tell your face, uh, yeah, tell your face, pal, not me. You have to be blind not to see what's on your mind. So, I was wondering, could you fill me in on the victim? Uh, Glenn Elg. He was a computer programmer. Oh, I see, a programmer. Found a new show the other night? Oh, really? He was just a regular Joe working for a small-time computer firm. Maggie never had any contact with the guy before that, and all she did was to take him coffee on the day of the murder. Pal. Yeah, Maggie also claimed to have never seen the guy before. Did the victim go to the restaurant often? Not according to the chef, said it was the first time he'd seen the guy. A programmer and a first-time customer at that. What possible re reason could Maggie have to kill a guy like that? That's what I thought. But a motive was still somehow established in her trial. You're kidding. What was her supposed motive? Sorry, pal. I'm real busy. I haven't gotten uh, enough time to sift through these papers. Look into it yourself, okay? What could the motive have been? This is something we need the Magatama back for so we can see what the chef's hiding in his heart. Besides his horrible fake French accent, which I am 100% replicating through accurate roleplay. Ultimate Tag is basically like American Gladiators or just Gladiators for Matt, uh, but all the games are just variant, uh, variations on the game of Tag. Really? Interesting. This isn't really a proper investigation, I'm kind of working on it by myself. Oh, that's right. The judge already ruled on the case and all the evidence is already. Uh, is in already, so the only problem with this uh, is with Maggie's testimony. Yeah, it doesn't sound very good for us, does it? Look, pal, I've got a mountain of papers on this case uh, to look over before tomorrow. So I'm just gonna say this. Maggie Bird's no liar. She's... she's... Okay, she's a bit out there. A, a bit off base sometimes, but he was a good cop. Not exactly complimentary, you know. It's super cheesy, you kinda hated it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes those are like the best types of shows. I used to love... Back in the 90s, they had all those kinds of like physical game shows that were really, really good. There was one... I think it was called Scavengers. It was on British TV at the very least, but it might have made it further afield than that. Or there could have been similar variants. It was so good. Oh my god, it was like... The theme was that, um, if you've ever watched Crystal Maze, you know, where there's a theme to the whole, like, they're going to a place and it's the Crystal Maze and there's all these puzzles that they have to solve and all that kind of stuff, physical, mental challenges and everything else, that was really brilliant, but it was like the, another iteration of that, but sci-fi based. They were supposed to be on some kind of floating, derelict ship, and scavengers, like salvagers, would go there and, like, go through this pirate-infested death trap of a ship to try to gather as much junk salvage as they could and make it out to the ship again. So they'd dock up, which was where they'd all start, and they'd go through the complex of this set that they'd built up with all these different puzzle rooms, and they had to do physical challenges, like they had to unscrew these bolts from these pipes that were like going all the way up a thing, and so they had to climb up to them while water was gushing down on them and stuff like that. And then at the end, they had to get out with their booty by the end of the game show. And the way they did that was like laser tag. It was fucking great. They had people who, pr who played as the pirates then, running around on balconies above trying to shoot at them with like laser tag guns, and everybody had like vests on that pinged if they got hit. And if they did, they had to drop the loot they had and run. And the more loot they gained at the end of the day was like more points to win. It was brilliant. I loved it. I was like, oh, this is fantastic. And it only lasted like half a season. There were like eight episodes and it got cancelled or something. It was awful. Whatever happened to Laser Tag? I know, right? We used to have a thing called Quasar. In bo it was all in bowling alleys. You know, there was like a big chain of national bowling alleys here. It's now closed, like Super, uh, they were like Super Bowl, I think they were called. Not the, you know, American football thing. And they had like a big section in the back that was set up for like a laser tag arena and it was called Quasar. It was great. I loved it so very much. I used to go and play it nearly every week at the one in town with my cousin. It was great. So what do you think really happened? You mean Superb Owl? Yes. Superb Owl, what a hoot. 
That was bad. I'll, I'll take all the boos for that. Uh, just how contradictory is her testimony? The biggest problem with Maggie's testimony is the number of people at the table. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. There we go, boo. Bring it on. Maggie still insists there was another guy sitting at the table with the victim. Right, but get this. Everyone else in the place says the guy was alone. Even the chef. And then there's the CD. CD? Oh yeah, she mentioned something about a CD. And then there was a sample CD on the table, sir. Let me guess, that wasn't there? But our guys turned that place upside down. There was no CD. What? Not on the table, not anywhere. Uh, in the whole restaurant, pal. But uh, didn't Maggie say the victim was wearing an earpiece too? Oh, excuse me. Yeah, but that was the, uh, the uh, for the portable radio on the front of the pocket of his hoodie. Gotta run again, got another Zoom call. No problem. Thank you very much for the lurks. Running away from the bad jokes. <laughs> you can say it, I won't be offended. Maybe just a little. The radio? He didn't have a CD player? You've got it. Your phony, uh, never explained that contradiction at all. Come to think of it, the owner of Trebien uh, didn't mention the CD either. I don't know why, but I get the feeling Mr. Armstrong's got something to hide. Let's present a bunch of stuff to him. How about my lawyer's badge? You see this? Is that thing real, pal? Don't you go and bite it. Why does everyone keep asking me that? I wonder what this phony of yours is like. He had Maggie found guilty of murder, doesn't that tell you? It's terrible. I've got to track down this creep. I wasn't at the trial myself, but I asked this one detective I know uh, how your defense was. What did he say? He started off by saying, I'm at a complete loss for words. He must have found some, uh, uh, found some quick because he went on about how bad you were for an hour. But he said you sucked so much, it seemed like you were trying to get Maggie found guilty. Of course, because whoever this is is the killer. I mean, it's obvious to me, but you know. It looked like I was trying to get Maggie found guilty. What's that? A sports paper? Yeah, I found it in the magazine rack at Trebien. It's dated the same day as the murder. You may be onto something here. And take a look at this. See this writing here? MC Bomber. Hey! What is it? I've heard that name somewhere before. Yeah, MC Bomber. Watch it be a hacker or something. I bet it's a hacker because this guy was a programmer. Right? I bet it's going to come around to something like that. Wow, he actually seems to be thinking for once. Ah, it's no good, I can't remember. And he goes back to being gumshoe we all know and love. Hey pal, I'm going to borrow this paper for a bit, okay? I want to get a handwriting analysis done on the scribble. Handwriting, huh? Be good to know uh, more about that in any case. Thanks pal. I'll bet this turns out to be an interesting clue. The thing is, you can only do a handwriting analysis if you have another piece of evidence with more handwriting on it to actually check and make sure it's the same. Sports paper given to Detective Gumshoe. They're not like fingerprints, you know. There's not samples of your handwriting in a database you can just get, like, a connection with the FBI and ask them. I mean, I hope not. Anyway, Jesus. Mine would thoroughly confuse them because it's different every time. What do you make of this? Sorry, pal, I can't think... All I can think about is Maggie at the moment. I bet you can. No, I didn't mean it like that. I meant... You don't have to explain, really. Please don't. Hey, so how come she's not with you today? Oh, she got abducted again. It just happens. Unless it's one of those bullshit psychological handwriting studies. Yes. Oh, yes. He's working down at the restaurant right now. <laughs> working, huh? Yeah, it's tough being broke, I would know. Uh, okay. Next time I see her, I'll show her how to make the world's best instant noodles. We low earners have to stick together. It's the only way. Mm, why is he shaking my hand with such enthusiasm? Please let go. He cross-examined me once, you know. Oh, really? Oh, uh, well, I mean in court. Okay. What, Maya did? Yeah, that was us. The big uh, guns locking horns. Uh-huh. 
Witness versus lawyer. It was a battle of cunning tactics and tricks. But the witness isn't supposed to play tricks. Can't believe she's gone. That's the guy who's going to be the prosecutor in Maggie's retrial tomorrow. Oh, really? He was working on a bunch of more important cases at the moment, but he cancelled them all just so he could take you on, pal. That's why the guy is so determined to see me fail. You sure attract a lot of attention, huh? Too bad it's all the wrong kind. <laughs> if you write your M this way, it means you're a pompous jerk and you ha and uh, you have gas. Yes. Those types of studies. I'm such a loser. Oh, I had high hopes for Maggie. I was going to make her the best detective there ever was, but then all of a sudden she was charged with murder and arrested. Never saw it coming. Never imagined they'd find her guilty. I hate myself for not being able to do anything. It's okay, Detective Gumshoe. We still have a chance to make this right. You know what? You're not such a bad guy after all, pal. What do you mean, after all? Have you gone to see Maggie? Of course I have. But I... I wasn't much good at consoling her. I'm... I'm not good with words. Oh. Yeah, I guess I must have looked a bit down. Maggie was really supportive of me. It was great to have someone to talk to. Did he go for her or for himself? Can't tell you how many times I've taught people's arguments apart in middle school when they tried to do that shit. Mm-hmm. The chef of Très Bien, huh? You know what that chef said to me? Ooh la la, your body is full of la toxins. And then he gave me this bottle. You still have it? What's in it? I don't know. The label says juniper. I'm under orders to put a few drops of it into my bath every day. Under orders? Yeah, you know, there's something about that lady, I mean, that guy. You can stop thinking, you can't stop thinking about him? Is that a love potion? Not like that, pal, give me a break, he's not my type. I mean, I can't stop thinking that he's involved with this case somehow. Sounds like he knows a little something more about our charming chef. Charming chef. What do you make of this? Sorry, pal. All I can think about is Maggie. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. But well, the victim was a programmer. The uh, Maggie had apparently never seen him before. Hmm. Poor Maya, it looks like Mr. Armstrong's really taken a shine to her. I suppose I'll have to just let her work at the restaurant for a while. I'll go pick her up from Trebien once things have cooled off. About now, I would imagine. No? Oh. to him about the programmer as well, the victim. Glenn Elg, what a name. I've just realised his name is a palindrome. <laughs> it's the same backward as it is forward. I was, it was always a gag in some of the names. You know. Or at least often there's a gag anyway. Can't remember what class it uh, was in, but we managed, uh, we did something uh, that was about the whole psychological profile based on handwriting, and every kid in a uh, class suddenly became experts on it. Oh. Yeah. We need to find that Magatama, though. Where the heck is it?
I've examined everything now. Examine everything in the office. This is the only stuff I can do. A giant building just outside the window. It's the Gatewater Hotel, a high class luxury hotel. The chain is getting so rich they bought a whole chunk of the next town over. Started building a huge theme park. It's going to be called Gatewaterland. I believe I did. Yeah, I'll, I'll double check them all. Oh no, Gumshoe left. We've already done everything we needed to do with him. He left. I wonder if the bellboy is going to send me a greeting card this year, too. Charlie, a quite decorative plant. He's sort of a keepsake, something to remember Mia by. Sure, the office is a mess, but I never forget to water this little fella. Old movie posters. Apparently this was the first movie that made Mia cry when she saw it a long time ago. Maya watched it recently and said she cried all night, too. Which I guess is why it's back up on the wall. I'll have to check it out one of these days, so this isn't anything new. My desk, don't get to use it much, and Pearls is cleaning it every day. Difficult looking legal books stand in a formidable row, they mock me. Actually, I've neglected them for so long they're covered in a layer of dust, I guess I should at least pretend to read them once in a while. So a hotel is opening a theme park based on a hotel. What kind of crackhead idea is that? Well, the, the Gatewater Hotel was from one of the first cases. It was actually from the case where Mia was killed. And a witness saw the supposed killing from all the way across the street in from the hotel window. And ever since then, when we debunked all that shit and then found out that actually the, the murderer, the real murderer, was staying there as well, and that the fake witness room and the murderer room were the same place and all that stuff. Yeah, it's become a famous attraction now. They tried to make a thing out of it. I wonder if they're making it into like a murder mystery land. Because they, they've been riding this whole idea that the special room that the murderer stayed in. Yeah. So it's probably, you know, probably something to do with all of that. It had one murderer, whoop de freaking do I know, right? But, video game logic. Oh, he's not gone yet. Okay, we can still talk to him. Let's double check profiles. I've gone through all of these. Did I do the Glen Elgs? What do you make of this? Yeah, okay, yeah, we, did, we went through all the profiles then, so I went through them one at a time. Oh, there's one more... Talky talk. So what exactly is it that caught your attention about the chef at Trebien? It's uh, kind of hard to say. The guy's probably not even connected with the case anyway. Hey, come on, detective. Don't, didn't, you, uh, didn't you say you'd give me dirt on anything? Well, this is sort of stuff is kind of unimportant gossipy stuff, you know, pal? Look, how about this? You go to Trebien and investigate the place yourself. And if you find out anything suspicious about the guy, you report back to me, okay? Uh, I suppose I get a choice in this? Better find out more about the chef at Trebien than report back to Gumshoe. Here we go, are you ready for the sight of Maya in a... a may... uh, may... Uh, in a waitress outfit? The scent of flowers sure is strong, it's almost making me dizzy. Uh, are you okay? Do you need some help? Hi. Oh, um, hello? Who was that just now, a customer? Well, things just got fucking creepy. That doesn't look like Maya. Yeah, that is not what I expected to see. She had sort of dark aura about her, especially around the eyes. Ah, welcome! B Avenue! Fucking Maya. God damn it! 
Wow, what a cute voice. Nanny? Oh, it's just you, Nick. Aya! <laughs> well, how do I look? Uh, maybe you should quit being a spirit medium. Maybe, but it's kind of boring being a waitress. Yeah, Maya's French is about as good as yours. <laughs> I mean, if you're my first ever customer, then who was uh, that woman I just saw? Oh, oh! Since you're here, you might as well have something to eat. I am kind of hungry, actually. Let's try examining everything again. No, nothing. Everything's ticked, so... Yeah, so there's nothing new to click. It's all ticked. So, how do you like your new job, Maya? I never knew there was so much for a waitress to do. Take people's orders, bring them their food, make the coffee, work the cash register, of course. We need a customer before we can do any of that. Yeah, it's a nice looking restaurant. It's a shame more people don't come. Don't forget about the ultra cute waitress. Check out my give me a tip smile. It's the same as your normal smile. Ten bucks says the chick was a ghost or some shit. Oh, shit. Hey, Nick, why don't you order something? The chef's preparing a tasty lunch set at the moment, or so he says. How much is it? $600. It's the twin tea set, so it's $20, of course. The twin tea set? I believe I'll be taking a pass on that. It's kind of expensive. What? But you can't. Come on, Nick, it's not very... Uh, not every day I get to be a waitress. I want to try carrying plates and working the cash register. How about cleaning the toilets? That should keep you busy. Damn. Yeah, right, maybe later. Um, how about the lunch? Oh, a fine choice, sir. No, I, um... Shit. Kitchen! A lunch special, please! With all the extras, drinks, side salads, desserts, and gift. Fuck, what? I don't need any of that! Just a moment, please, sir. Damn. Something wrong with this girl. Maya's really getting into this. How much is the set lunch then? Twenty dollars, huh? But with the drink, the side salad, the dessert... Yes, forty-five dollars? Wait a sec, Maya! Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. Whoa. <laughs> Here you are. Our deluxe forty-five lunch set. Forty-five? Was in forty-five dollars? Yeah. Whoa. A dish inspired by lobster and abalone fricassee with a balsamic vinaigrette. Bon appetit! Uh, thanks? Come on, Nick. Hurry up and try it out already. Lobster, huh? Alright, down the hatch it goes. Oop. Well? Are you hungry, Maya? Starving. Here, it's yours. <laughs> Does Maya really not know how money works? No, she doesn't. She has no idea. Well, when it's someone else's money, she doesn't know how it works. Really? Well, remember Maya, my wallet doesn't print money, so you better polish off that plate. <laughs> if I'm paying for this, you're fucking eating it. I just remembered. I've got to clean the toilets. After you vomit into them. Hey! You can't be in that much of a hurry to clean the toilets. A lunch special costs $20 despite how unbelievably bad it tastes. How does that guy manage to make food taste so bad? Hey Nick, you want to take a peek at the kitchen? A kitchen, huh? Not a bad idea. Well, but first I'm blowing through this really quickly. I wanted to present some of this to her as well. Let's talk about the food. About this. Sorry, Nick. I'm a waitress now. I've got piles of work uh, waiting for little old me. Uh-huh. No? Okay, so there's nothing else we can chat to her about. Got a jet and take a shower. See you all later. No problem, Alchemist. Take care of yourself, buddy. Pleasure to see you. Have a good day. 
Hmm. Now, what was it that Maggie said again? In the kitchen, you'll get to see all of the chef's greatest secrets, like how bad he cooks his food. In the kitchen? Hmm. That sounds tasty. Hey, wait up, Maya. What is it? I'm pretty busy right now. When are you going to show me around? There goes my plan to find some cool clue and show off in your face. I'd better conduct the search in the kitchen myself. So much pink. And here it is, the famous Trebian kitchen. It's my first time in here too, actually. There's a weird atmosphere in here, that's for sure. Mr. Armstrong will be back soon, so we'd better search quickly. Chop, chop. What are all these lace curtains for? I don't know, but they give the place a real homey feel, don't they? It also screams fire hazard to me when they're hanging over the cooker like that. Hmm, lace curtains. You know, if I was a cooking pot, I'd be pr uh, perfectly happy to sit on a shelf under those. How do you respond to something like that? With an inquisical eyebrow raise. Now this is a large mirror. I bet this is where he makes himself look pretty. There's a book on the dresser. Clarice Armstrong's Bedtime Literature. Not exactly Pulitzer surprise material, is it? Looks like a collection of poems he's written. Poems? Cool. Read one out. And say it in your best French accent with intensity, okay? Okay, um... Here's one. <clears throat> it's called... Printemps. <laughs> the two of them, like actors, from a film, the coffee still undrunk. Sweet nothings over too soon on that sad Saturday morning. The foolish cocktail so delicious. Take the last sip of your tea, and I know what I will do. I must lie to you, I must. Huh, that's it. Yep, that's a poem for you. It's interesting it's talking about two people and a coffee on drunk though. I wonder when uh, when that was written. What's this? It looks like a treasure chest or something. Wow, look at all these little bottles. Oh, there are the therapy oils. He's got so many, they're overflowing on the floor. Let's see, one, two, three, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, a hundred. They're all the same too. Hey, wait a minute. What is it? There's one bottle that's different from all the others. One of these bottles is not like the other. Well, what do you know? And it doesn't have a label either. It's poison. And it doesn't smell. Don't put that too close to your face. So what's the liquid inside then, I wonder? Hey, Nick, we should borrow this. I mean, look how many bottles he's got. He won't miss this one, will he? Yeah, let's just steal somebody's property. Found in the kitchen. Shape is different from the other bottles. Contents unknown. Right. Am I clicking on here? Countertop? I know I'm uh, now I know I'm in a French restaurant. I've never heard of, of most of these seasonings. Hey Nick, this container has oyster sauce. What's that? Isn't that used in Chinese food? Ah, look, right there on the counter. The magatama. What's it doing there? Grab it, grab it. What indeed? Thieving little bugger. He took my magatama. So oyster sauce isn't that used in Chinese. Look at these knives. They look really sharp. I'd like to see how one of these slices through a cheesecake. That's where your brain goes. Oh look, a knife. I wonder how it cuts through cheesecake. Huh? A cheesecake? You don't certainly need a sharp knife for one of those, Nick. Hmm. That smells good. Something's bubbling away in that nice under that pot. Must be the lobster and abalone fricassee with the balsamic vinaigrette. Isn't that what I just ate for lunch? Maybe. What you ate is the only French dish I know the name of. And if it smells good, how could it taste so bad? Like, oh my god.
about this. Sorry, Nick, blah, 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 blah. She's a waitress now. Maybe there was something else we were supposed to find in there, because nothing else has happened. Oops. Nothing else here. Okay. Criminal Affairs Department has new stuff. Hey, you're just in time. What is it, Detective Gumshoe? The lab got back to me about that newspaper you gave me. You must mean the sports paper with the memo scribbled on it? So, what did it say? What did they say? Did the analysis turn anything up? They said the doodle was written by the victim, Glenn Elg. No doubt about it. I expected as much. The victim took the paper with him to the restaurant on the day of the murder. That's our best interpretation of the facts at the moment. Good detective in. Well done. So, the doodle is in his handwriting. MC Bomber. I get the feeling I've heard that name somewhere before. Oh well. I guess it'll come back to me. Don't forget to report back to me with whatever you find at the restaurant, okay, pal? When did I start taking orders from Gumshoe, though? I get the feeling there's something I need to show him. Yes, thank you, game. That's exactly why I came here. You don't need to hold my hand quite so tight, you're breaking my fingers. You got one of those aroma bottles, too, huh? Only this one doesn't smell. Huh? I don't get you. This was mixed in with all the other aromatherapy bottles, but it's not the same. It doesn't even look the same, wouldn't you agree? A cologne bottle that doesn't smell, huh? Smells like a skunk to me, pal. Mind letting me borrow that bottle for a while? I want to send it to the lab for analysis. It's gonna be the poison, you guys. The victim was poisoned, so the contents of this bottle are pretty important. Small bottle given to the detective. I had a hunch there was something funny about that, chef. You suspect Jean Armstrong? I've got that guy's number. I know what his secret is. That must be the same secret Gumshoe was talking about before. I guess I'd better fill you in on the details. About this Armstrong guy's secret, I mean. He's a really bad chef. Oh, let's also present the shitty food to him. I just had a lobster dinner. You know, just to make him feel bad. What do you make of this? Sorry, pal, doesn't know anything, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so he doesn't care. So according to the boys down at the lab, the doodles were probably made by the victim. Probably. Analyzing this kind of writing is difficult since it's done with a fiber-tipped pen. But don't worry, I'll vouch for it. Why would Gumshoe have to vouch for it? Can't it stand on its own? I mean, you vouching for something kind of devalues it just a little bit. Alright, tell me Armstrong's secret. So what's Mr. Armstrong's secret? You ever had lunch at Tre Bien, pal? Uh, yes. So how was it? Put it nicely, it was inedible. And no, I did not mispronounce incredible. Hey, don't worry about being nice around me, pal. You and I both know the reason the place is so empty is because of the food. I mean, the place is clean. He's got a girl like Maggie wait as a waitress, so... Yeah, I guess it's probably the food. The real scoop on the guy is that he's up to his ears in debt. Really? How much does he owe? This is a copy of his loan contract. He's about half a million in the red? What? Half a million? Are we talking Doras? Yeah, hey, if it was Sterling, he'd, be, he'd really be in trouble. I don't know about that now. <laughs> you know. Sorry, that figure just took me by surprise. Yeah, this case is full of surprises. And you'd be willing to bet that the chef's got something to do with the most of them. That's my hunch. So his debt is half a million dollars. Ooh. The owner of the loan is Tender Lender. 
A tender lender. Oh my goodness. So, yikes, I say. It's for half a million dollars, pal. That's, um, half a million dollar bills. Exactly. What was the um in the middle there for? He was doing the math. Give him a break, Phoenix. Is there really that much money tied up in this case? I can't give you an answer on that, pal. Not without the case in front, uh, case file in front of me. But I'll tell you this: that Armstrong guy would have done anything for cash. He was desperate, you know. No, I don't. But I think I sort of get the picture. So that CD might have actually contained some like very valuable data. Maybe he stole it, and that's why it's not there. Hmm. Maybe he got paid off to lie in court. Okay, well, now that we've done that... Let's show this... No, she doesn't care. scooter here that's all smashed up. Hmm, the old guy's not here anymore. Drat, I still have some unanswered questions for him. This? What is this? A scooter? We'd leave it right here in the middle of the park like this. The wheel guard and the lights are busted. I guess it must have been an accident. It's totally wrecked. <laughs> Oh god, somebody's getting all dramatic. Oh no! Yar! Wow. Holy shit! The fuck is this guy? Hey, what you think you was doing with my bike? Uh, no, I was just. Grrr! You've been messing with my new ride? Is that what you've been doing? New ride? That's kind of... Right. You's gonna pay for this. It wasn't me, I was just passing by. Hey! Then who's... Uh, who's the one that uh, covered my saddle and crap, huh? Oh my god. Alright, calm down, Charlie Sheen. Let's just turn the tiger blood right down and take a deep breath. Holy Christ. Right, you's gonna pay. You's catch my drift. No, wait a sec. I'm not a pigeon. I'm a wise guy, huh? Oh, God. <laughs> I ought to beat you so hard, it'll feel like you were smooching the express train. Uh-oh. You better watch your back. This ain't over. I'm gonna round up a group of lawyers, and then you's gonna pay. Uh, actually, I am a lawyer myself. What you say? I'm Phoenix Wright, Attorney of Law. <laughs> Phoenix Wright. Suppose saying use Phoenix Wright. Are you saying use Phoenix Wright? Yeah, I am. So you're a wise guy too, huh? Because I'm Phoenix Wright. I'm the one and only. Oh my God, this is the guy. Or is this just some other guy who's also imitating the shit out of him? Oh god, what in the hell? <laughs> it's Joe Exotic. <laughs> what? Out of my way, I got a cruise. <laughs> Away he goes. And he's gone. Surely that guy wasn't my phony, was he? The world's getting weird. He wasn't anything like me. Guess I better make a note of the scooter. Scooter added to the court record. Ridden by my phony, the wheel guards all smashed up. He looked like Phoenix. I mean, yeah, if Phoenix went to the spray on tan booth. <laughs> Cap. 
pathetic. Here he is again. Oh, it's you. A few threats from a little brat like that, and you look like a pigeon that's got seeds in its eyes. Have you been here the whole time, then? I was in the strawberry. I heard some. I had some thinking to do. More like you had some cowering to do. Coward. Are you a regular at the restaurant, sir? It's just that if you dislike it so much, why would you keep going there? Sir? Oh god, here we go again. There you are, you filthy pigeon, take that! Oh, here we go, now Magatama time. We're gonna Magatama this up. I knew it. The old guy's got something to hide, but what could it be? Being triggered by this guy's nose, tell me about it. Oh my god. Just asking about the scooter. He secretly enjoys sweet stuff. <laughs> no, he doesn't care. Okay. Do you know about the loan? I don't think we're gonna get anything out of this guy, are we, until, uh... I think I've already asked him about this guy, yeah. I think we need to break this Psyche Locks on him. Save it. I haven't saved it actually in a while. I should do that in case the game crashes. Mm -hmm. Alright, present the Magatama to him. Boom! Let's break these locks. It's time you told me the truth. Why are you a regular at the restaurant that you dislike so much? Isn't it obvious? People only have one reason to go to restaurants. To eat. To eat? That's the whole truth? What do you mean? I don't think you go to that restaurant for the food at all. You insolent brat, how dare you accuse me? What proof have you got? Oh, I've eaten the food, it's shit. I can tell uh, that not on... Uh, I can tell that not... You, nor anyone else in the world, would go to that place for its food. I've eaten it. It's horrid and expensive. The proof is in the pudding. Or in this case, the lunch menu. That's actually the proof of the pudding is in the eating. But okay. That's the twin tea set. The food at Trebien is uh, terrible and expensive. You're wrong. It's cheap. Huh? I'm rich. I inherited money when I was a boy. Yes, I'm stinking rich. I haven't done a lot of work since I was a boy, other than feeding the pigeons. What a load of crock. Taste another story, but the price? It's nothing to me. Maybe yeah, you could get cheaper still that would taste better. I would think that... I... Okay. Earth saying that... You go there because you've got money to burn. There are more expensive places to go that taste better. Exactly. I have so much money, uh, so much cash, I go for a swim in my money vault every day. Wow. All right, Scrooge McDuck. Goodness me. Maybe it's his son? Hmm. Interesting. Interesting theory. Unfortunately, that's a lie. What? You don't have money to burn, your flat broke. How the hell am I gonna know that? Then again, this guy wouldn't be in so much debt trying to run his place if this guy was such a happy regular. But I don't think that's it. I think we need more information. This this seems like we don't have enough to break this guy yet. I should investigate and gather more clues before I try again. Let's go back to Trebien. Dude's still not here.
Hmm. What do you make of this? Okay, now he's just too busy thinking about bird. Hmm, okay, I guess the only thing we can do is break this guy's psyche locks. We must have everything we need. Oh, the magazine. He's hunting for jobs. The magazine he didn't want. It's literally a job uh, ad mag. I've just remembered. Look, it's been what, like five and a half hours now? I'm tired. <laughs> Time you told me the truth. Blah, 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 blah. You're not there for the food, it tastes revolting, here you go, take that shit. He's a stinking rich, but we know he's not, and we challenge him on that with this, job listings. Because when we tried to take this, he literally said it was his, and he was like, leave that alone, that's mine. At first he berated us for, you know, picking up stuff that people have thrown away. And then when we told him we were taking it anyway, he's like, no, that's mine, give it back. Give it away though. This is yours, right? My magazine. Why would a rich retiree be looking for a job? I... I... I was... Ah, so what? So I was looking for a job. I'm buying a lot of... Uh, I'm buying a lot at the moment. I need spending money. Oh? I don't go to the restaurant for food. Just for the uh, Java chinos. Oh, yeah. I think you mean the cappuccino. Anyway, how much does a cappuccino cost there? Eight dollars. Those are better be some golden beans. What's your problem? You think a poor man would be better off drinking dishwater, uh, do you? Is that it? No, I wasn't thinking that. I was wondering if the coffee there is really that great. No, it's not. But... But anyway, yes. That place has free newspapers to read every day. Bullshit, it doesn't. Newspapers, huh? Exactly. They don't want me hanging around at home, so I go there. I'm sorry, sir, but there are no free papers to read at Trebien. Hmm. This is probably it. This was brought by the victim. Take a look at this. What is it? The newspaper I found behind the magazine rack at Trebien. So, what of it? This was the only paper there, and it's dated more than a month ago. What? Do you see what I'm getting at here? The restaurant doesn't get newspapers. This is just one uh, that a customer happened to leave behind. Ah. Ah! Get wrecked. Tell me why you're so determined to hide the truth. I'm not hiding anything. I won't have to put this guy out of his misery. Listen, the real reason why you go uh, so much to Trebien is... Who, I wonder? Who? None of this other stuff makes any sense now, so it's got to be one of these two. He either goes because of the girls, which he, you know, protests haughtily about looking too much, or because of the guy. I'm gonna go with this for the lulz. No. <laughs> it was worth a try. Well, <laughs> you're wrong, you're wrong. Oh, he's gone silly. You're so stupid, ha ha ha. Not the food and the coffee. It's not the newspapers. What else is there? Tell me, why are you so determined to hide the truth? Real reason he goes is him. Okay, I guess not. Did I pick him? 
I did. You're right. I meant to pick... Maggie. <laughs> Thank you. I'm tired! <laughs> My brain is just melting, okay? There's too much, too much going on up here, too much info. What are you asking me about that girl for? She was the waitress at Trebien. Ah. Therefore, the answer to the mystery of why an old man would drink expensive coffee at a terrible restaurant. It's the waitress. Ugh. But I don't recognize the face. And you're probably telling the truth there. You were complaining a lot about the, you know, how much of the leg you could see quite earlier on, you filthy old man, you. You weren't looking at the girl's face, but at her outfit. Boop. Perv. That's the truth, isn't it? You became a regular at the restaurant because of the waitress's uniforms. That uniform is all you can think about, isn't it? Uh, uh. I can't take it. To you, that waitress was your... Enough, please. No more. Yeah, no more, Phoenix. Please stop talking. Stop saying that word. Stop saying waitress. Stop it, stop it. Hey, we got pretty much all of our health back. Uh, sir? Yes, it's true, I was there for the young girl. Fine, so I'm a dirty, wicked, sinful old devil. No, no, I didn't mean it like... I even get one of those lousy cups of Javachino every time for $8. All because of the serving girl. Punish me, lock me up. Okay, this took a very weird turn. That's not what I'm here for. You'll be the same another 20 years and you'll understand what it's like. You'll know how painful it is to be an old man like me. No, really, listen, sir. Stop calling me that. I have a name, you know. Show me some respect, hmm? I'm Victor Kudo. Sorry, Mr. Kudo. You young ones. You think you all know... Uh, you think you know it all, don't you? Well, I'm not saying another word. I won't tell you anything more. This guy was in the restaurant at the time of the incident, which means I have to hear his testimony one way or another. Hmm. I don't believe this. I even broke his psyche locks and everything. I guess I'll have to try to get him when he's in a better mood. Hmm. Yeah, he's not gonna talk to us still, is he? Cantankerous old dude. Is what's-his-face gonna get back yet? I need to break his locks now. the old man. Is he still feeding the pigeons? Yeah, he fed me as well. I got a bunch of those seeds in my eyes. Oh, ouch. Hey, Maya. Would you mind coming with me for a while? Huh? Me? Why? There's something I really want to ask that old man. <laughs> sure, okay. Just get... Let me just get changed. No. That's not the point. <laughs> no. Hang on. Can you go like that? I guess. Uh, sir? Hmm, you again. Hmm. Well, well, I see. Uh, Nick? His eyes are burning into me. It's okay, I think it's going pretty well. Gah. Huh? You're still just a child. Run along and play on the slide, alright? Play on the slide? Oh, we were so close. Just a little more and he would have spilled. Maya, could you do me a favor and just channel Mia real quick? I'm sorry. <laughs> but, you know, I think we need a bit more of something. Sweeten this guy. Oh. Oh, this feels so wrong. Hmm. <clears throat> How can we crack this guy? Excuse me, please, sir. Wait, can't you see I'm feeding the pig? Ooh. Oh my god, she did it! Nice, we didn't even have to ask. She knows what we're trying to do. Here? Well. If you don't mind, sir, I'd really love to talk with you. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, certainly. I'm Victor. Victor Kudo. 
Even from beyond the grave. Wow. <laughs> that was way, way too weird for me. About the incident? You mean the man who died after drinking the Javachino? It's like he's a different person. It was quite a shock even for me. He was a strange looking boy. The girl took the Javachino over to him, you see. And? Was the customer alone? Definitely. He was the only person at the table. Then he took one sip of his Javachino and... And? And he said something like, ah, And then collapsed, dead. Oh, how terrifying. You're so good at listening, aren't you? <laughs> Damn it. We're literally now running like a companion maid cafe here in this open park. I'll tell you anything, whatever you want to know. <laughs> he certainly seems to be telling the truth now, but it looks like Mr. Kudo didn't see the other man either. Do you like the food at Trebien? Well, of course, I'm really quite a sophisticated man. I was a young businessman once, you know. I set up a casino in London. Really? How interesting. Eating the food at that restaurant really takes me back to my days in France. That's not in France. How dare you, sir. What a lovely story. London's in England, not France. Yeah, thanks, Phoenix. Oh yes, France is wonderful. I'd love to show you around the city sometime. It's too much. I can't take it. I want France. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe Mia's laughing at the guy. Oh god. You visit Trebian a lot, don't you? Of course, I mean, yes. I'd like to come and see you there. <laughs> really? Oh, you flatter me so. The owner would be delighted to welcome you, I'm sure. Be careful of that chef, my dear. The chef? You mean Mr. Armstrong? That's right. The man's an ex-con. Oh, really? He's an ex-con, huh? What do you know about him? Dish. Whatever did Mr. Armstrong do? Oh, no. Those eyes, I can't take this. Mia's really got this guy eating out of her hand. Like a pigeon. Ha! He steals things from his customers. He stole the Magatama from us, that's right. Thief! From his customers? Gloves, handkerchiefs, little things mainly. He's a pilferer, so you better be careful around him, my dear. So he stole the CD. I was right, he took the CD. Are you sure about this? Of course, he was arrested for it once. I was there when it happened, having my Javachino. He really is a regular. Let me write you a little haiku about it. Oh, no, that's fine, we don't need a haiku. A haiku? A Japanese poem. I'll explain all you need to know about that chef. Convicted before. A wicked man or woman. Repeat offender. <laughs> okay. Bare minimum amount of effort. If he takes anything again, you let me know. If it's not too expensive, I'll buy you a replacement. Oh, poor guy. He couldn't do enough for Maya. Old pervert. Okay, Phoenix. That's about as much as I can do to help. Thanks, Mia. I've got some really important information thanks to you. Honestly, I can't believe Maya called for me for something like this. <laughs> My god. <laughs> what the hell? Alright, now we can break this guy's locks. Yeah, let's just save it as well again, now that we've got that much progress done. I guess it's about time to wrap up today's investigation. Had enough of being a waitress? Yeah, plus no one came to the restaurant. <laughs> Ooh la la, Mademoiselle Maya. No, how can you leave me like this? I'm so sorry, but you're a thief. <laughs> that reminds me. You and I have business. Mr. Armstrong had a psyche lock, or three, didn't he? I'm going to have to break those. I will break you. Mr. Armstrong, I hope you won't mind, but I'd like to have another word with you. Volunteers, of course. Okay, so... 
This is to learn about Maggie's motive. Apparently something happened. I want to also talk to him about some of this stuff first. If we can. Pardon, pardon. Without my reading glasses, I cannot see this. I do not read English so well. He's not even looking at it. Better find a way to make him look then. What about this? No, okay, he doesn't know anything about the scooter. And he can't read that as well. Okay, cool. Alright, yeah, so present. Boom. I'm gonna bring you down. Oh no, look at that face. Look at the bib bib. <laughs> oh goodness. What is happening? I do not like this horrible feeling. Okay, gaze into the Magatama. Look deep. Listen to the sound of my voice. I have to know the truth. What happened that day? Sam! Dude! Where have you been all day? You've missed a treat. I've been doing a French accent. <laughs> a bad one, intentionally. Because I don't think this guy is actually French. And I'm only doing a bad one because he would do it badly as well. <laughs> You're working. Well, that's fine too. <laughs> How's your day going, dude? Good to see you. Thank you for stopping by either way. So I have to know the truth. What, what happened that day? Alors, alors, I will confess everything. I, just don't hurt me. Huh? Well, that was a new world record. It was a lottery ticket. A lottery ticket. Dies a little inside. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, lucky stars. You weren't here for the whole stream. <laughs> You'd be in so much pain right now. <laughs> uh, the man who died here had lottery tickets. I wondered what those were on the table. I thought they were like train tickets or something. For well, half a million dollars. Really? Half a million? Oui, but after that incident, this ticket... It disappeared. The ticket disappeared? This was the motive that uh, the prosecution gave for Maggie. Okay, so they're suggesting that she saw the... Uh, half a million and killed him like you know just produced poison out of nowhere like oh I'd carry this around with me at all times in case I need to steal someone's lottery ticket a little convenient they said that she poisons a man to get the half a million dollar lottery ticket why didn't you tell me about this sooner <sighs> Mais alors. You've been trying to hide this information about the lottery ticket from me, and I want to know the reason why. He stole it. No, monsieur. You doubt me. But I have confessed to you everything I know. Mr. Armstrong, the half a million dollar lottery ticket. I think you know who took it. I think the winning ticket was stolen by this person. You. Mr. Armstrong, I believe there's a very high probability that it was you. Ah! Smash. Wow, that's one piercing scream, even for a man like him. Uh, mais pardon, mus um, uh, uh, par oh god, no, I cannot. Parque moi? What, uh, I don't know. Why? You have no evidence. <laughs> I am not Mask de Mask. No, we know who Mask de Mask is. I am not the kind of person who steals the property of others. Sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Armstrong, but I have evidence to the contrary. I present to you proof that you have stolen from others in the past. Now, is he going to be the victor's note? Well, actually, yes, he was convicted. But is that? What is this, a poem? Oh, monsieur, you know me so well. I adore poems. Please read it and put some feeling into it. Convicted before, a wicked man or woman. Repeat offender. I'm sorry to ha uh, to bring it up, Mr. Armstrong, but you've been arrested for stealing from customers before, haven't you? Oh, dear. Uh, you are the liar. You deny it? Do not make the false accusations. 
Hmm, so you have any proof? I want to see the uh, incontestable proof that I have ever stolen from any of my customers. My Magatama. We found this in your kitchen. It seems old habits die hard, Mr. Armstrong. What is that? This is my Magatama, and I found it in your kitchen. No! Wow, that scream just about broke some windows. Oui, oui. I have a weakness for the trinkets uh, and the figurines. My, uh, my hand just slips out, I can't stop it. You've stolen handkerchiefs, gloves, and other things from customers, right? Oui, it's the truth. I am just a timid little girl inside, monsieur. A timid little girl. Besides, this time I was not, uh, it was not a small trinket, oui? It was $500,000. Why would I steal it? I have no need for such money. No, nobody has any need for half a million dollars. You know, really now. Oui, monsieur, what is it? Isn't it true that you're in some pretty serious trouble? And that you are desperately in need of a large amount of cash? Here's your loan contract for half a million dollars. This restaurant is, in, is deep in the red, isn't it? Ah. You have a loan to the tune of half a million dollars. That lottery ticket would have wiped out your debts. Ugh. Well, Mr. Armstrong, what do you have to say for yourself now? Ah, ah! Wrecked. <laughs> I apologize so profusely. I know. I know, it's bad. I wouldn't normally be doing it if it wasn't actually also written in a kind of French-like way. <laughs> just, it would be harder for me to read, actually, and not do it. Anyway, tell me, motive. Mr. Armstrong, you said that the victim had a winning lottery ticket for half a million dollars. How did you know he had something like that in the first place? The man, he was listening to the, the radio with the earpiece. Hmm? Maggie said something about that too. The winning number was announced on the news, I think. All of a sudden, he exploded. Yes, half a million, he shouted. And the ticket? We. Oui. He had all of the, of the tickets spread out on the table. I, I was so desperately in need of money, so I put the poison in the coffee. Oh, that was Phoenix. Put the poison in the coffee? No, 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 no. Oh, no, you naughty man. I simply helped myself to one of his tickets. What? The victim collapsed and Maggie passed out. I thought to myself... Oh, I, I don't know that word. Parque pa? I don't know. I'm not going to try. <laughs> he had so many of them. Yes, but only one of them was the winning ticket, and he wouldn't know which one it was because he wasn't listening. So he just grabbed one of them. How could you do that, Mr. Armstrong? Maggie was arrested because of you. No, this is not true. This, Kind of. I did not take it. The ticket for half a million, I mean. But you just told us you did. Well, technically he didn't say he did. You said you took a ticket. Eh, no, Manfili. It was not. That's enough. Oh? Ah! <gasps> Godot! Triclops is here. What the heck are you doing here? Ugh. This is without a doubt. The worst coffee I've ever tasted, Mr. Armstrong. Came here for coffee? Does this craving for coffee know no bounds? Perhaps Mr. Armstrong sold one of the victim's tickets on the day in question. <laughs> I am the heir of none. Uh, just a pretty little girl who everyone is laughing at. But in that case, Maggie shouldn't be the only one under suspicion. He had the wrong ticket. What? Mr. Armstrong made off with the winning ticket's pretty neighbor. So the ticket he took was worthless? Not quite. He did win something. A dollar. You see? 
I'm just a pretty face without my looks I have not seen. So? What happened to the winning ticket then? The one he meant to steal? Indeed, what did happen to it? I don't like spoiling myself by watching trailers, so... We'll just wait and see how the movie turns out tomorrow, won't we? I like how he just came here just to gloat. Ugh. Voila, you too. Time to laugh at the pretty uh, little air. Uh, what? Looks like I won't be needing this note anymore. Thrown into the trash. Looks like we've got a new mystery now, namely where did all the winning well, where did the winning ticket go? I've got a bad feeling about this. Well anyway. We can't let Maggie suffer any longer for this, and certainly not again. Yep. Well, guys, it's that time. Wow, we actually dragged that out right to the very end of the stream.